naturalist, PhD, and author Thomas E. Smith said, experience without words is just experience. Words without experience are just words. There is a special little corner in our home where the people in my household of all ages come to express our appreciation of the little or big things of nature. It is our nature art cart and I want to share its contents with you today and further also the space, the environment I've prepared to further allow the wonder that is nature in my home. I made this mason jar holder many moons ago and in it we hold uh, water paintbrush pens, regular watercolor paintbrushes, and watercolor pencils. So the paintbrush pens are perfect to take on the go, perhaps nature journaling at a park. Uh, and all you need to do is fill the pens with water and you can use them directly with a dry palette. Uh, there are different uh, tip brushes and so it eliminates having to bring a cup of water and different paint brushes to dip it in. This set of paintbrushes is from a craft store we had locally called AC Moore. They did go out of business, um, but it's just a set of synthetic haired watercolor brushes with different tips, larger ones for the little guys, so we're enjoying this set. Another supply that's good for on the go or for the younger nature journalists are watercolored pencils. So just you use them just as you would colored pencils and then you take a paintbrush and these pair nicely with the paintbrush pens. So once you're finished with your coloring then you just take a wet paintbrush over it and it gives you a watercolor effect. Moving on to the cart, here we store some of our field guides that we use often for annotations in our journal entries. Keeping a Nature Journal is the one book I would recommend from this video if you could only get one, and I'll show you more of it in a bit. I also keep window star paper here, not just for the windows, but also for the littles to cut and paste into their journals. This kit is new to us. It is a book binding kit. So once we've collected a season or two of journal entries, we want to bind and make our own journals. And this kit has all the tools we need. It has thread, a tool for piercing, uh, more needles. This is a project that I'm taking on with my teenagers and so we're excited to put this to use soon. Let's talk about some of the actual journals that we're currently using. This is a hardcover spiral bound journal of mixed media paper and I found these at Walmart. I think they were under five dollars. Here is one uh, with a cover that my daughter did hand stitch during our secret garden literature guide uh, if you saw that a few videos ago. For the very young children, I suggest a guided nature journal. It's more like an activity journal where you'll have prompts and suggestions for nature activities already laid out for you. It's open and go, and this is one of our favorite from The Good and the Beautiful. And as I mentioned, my teenagers are working on binding their own journal, so here are some of their loose entries. <music> So some of the paper we use for those journal entries are watercolor paper and we have Strathmore and Canson but our favorite is the Strathmore brand. Um, whatever brand it is for watercolor paper we do like the 140 pound. Strathmore is the brand that I would recommend for any type of paper uh, but we did run out so as backup right now we're using uh, this Royal and Land Nickel Essentials drawing paper. Next in the cart is Nature's Art Box, 65 projects to make with natural supplies. And there are suggestions in here for journal entries, uh, flower pressing and imprints, and just a neat book, so that lives in here. And other basic supplies like a clipboard, a ruler, and a protractor and compass kit uh, that we use and is a must for phonology wheels. Moving on to the second tier, this is a canvas roll of markers. We also have Stockmar block crayons, Falana crayons, and chalk pastels. 
and these are two uh, palettes or sets of oil pastels by Royal and Lenico. A must for nature journaling are good erasers. We love the kneadable erasers uh, and found them to be the best. I like the Lyra brand. More oil pastels in a pencil pouch ready to grab and go into a backpack. We are down to two watercolor palettes. My favorite is the Lyra Opaque Watercolor Palette. This is the 12 pan palette. And this second one is a non-name. It doesn't have a brand uh, watercolor palette. There are more selections of colors for the littles, but not as good as the Lyra. This glass jar holds our watercolor pigments, and we only have the three primary colors, and that, of course, we can mix to make other colors. And to use with our watercolor pigments is a paint jar holder. This one holds six glass jars and you can refrigerate your leftover paint for a few days to reuse. In the last tier, I keep a basket of supplies for handwork. Yarn for our big loom or the knitting tower. This is the loom needle. Foam pad for needle felting and the needle felting tools are in the pouch. Wool roving. Instructions to a succulent and cacti uh, needle felting project that my team is currently working on. Here's that knitting tower, and we love this one. It's from a childstream.com. And Stockmar Wax. All of these supplies are for keeping hands busy during our read alouds. I keep a few trays handy for containing messes. This whiteboard here is specifically for watercoloring. Uh, I purchased it on Bella Luna Toys and it really does come in handy for wet on wet watercoloring. This is an Instax Fujifilm camera. These are fun for scrapbooking. We haven't used it in a while but Bella loves it and will go through an entire uh, roll of film in one outing. And this is our giant wooden loom frame from Melissa and Doug. Uh, it's so big it doesn't fit in the frame and not necessarily for nature journaling, but it does live in this corner. Our telescope also sits here next to a big window and this one is from National Geographic. We actually found it at Sam's for a great deal, maybe two Christmases ago. Um, it is a good starter and budget-friendly telescope if you're in the market for one. And another must, in my opinion, is a compact portable easel. Keeping a Nature Journal by Claire Walker Leslie. This is a book of simple techniques anyone can learn to keep a nature journal. So part one is on getting started, discovering nature journaling, beginning your journal supplies, and a sampling of journaling styles. Part two on journaling through each season. Part three are pages from Claire's journal. And part four is techniques on learning and teaching nature journaling. Throughout the book, there are drawing exercises like drawing insects, drawing deciduous trees, birds, domestic pets. Uh, there's sketching and using color and even nature journaling from indoors. We spend a lot of time outdoors, which is naturally where we find most of our inspiration, but I am sure to make our environment the inspiration too. And I do that by displaying nature-inspired posters, our plants, and nature treasures we bring inside like seashells, twigs, and acorns. And of course, a collection of books that foster a love and wonder of all creations. So more resources, book type resources that we use for inspiration are Fandex Family Field Guides. And again, we use these for the detailed photo illustrations and the field notes for annotations and recording data. 
We found this National Geographic guide to insects and spiders at Ollie's for like $3 with 150 species of North America referenced in here. This is a wonderful resource for identification. So we did already talk about keeping a nature journal. Let's move on to take along guides. This is the only one we own in this series, but we've enjoyed it so much for referencing. Uh, there's good information. The illustrations in here are a gem for inspiring your own. And that is exactly how we do use uh, nature themed picture books. Uh, for our nature studies. The spreads of illustrations are beautiful and sure to inspire your own beautiful journal entries. My toddler loves this series of Pika Through uh, Nature picture books. We own two, Bee and Moon. I've got my eyes open for a good deal on the third one we need to complete the collection, which is Tree. And so these are available on Amazon for full retail, which is like I think 10 or 11 dollars but i found both of these at ollie's for under four dollars another nature themed picture book series that we adore uh, there is one more in this series and then one more set to be released later this year uh, though stories are wonderful but besides that there is also educational content in these books And of course, the Julia Rothman collection goes without saying. I've shared in many videos uh, that we use this collection to build nature studies for referencing and the illustrations for inspiration. Another favorite, uh, the Welcome to the Museum series. Here I have Animalium and Botanicum. These books are stunningly beautiful. The elegance and detail and informational depth uh, is sure to inspire and motivate anyone to study and document the wonders of the natural world. Finally, my last note is this. Nature journaling is as beautiful and unique as the persons behind the journals. There is no one right way. For younger journalists, it may be hands-on, as most learners are kinesthetic learners. It's with living sensorial and tactile experiences how young children record such experiences and senses. It may be an entire process like going on a walk to pick flowers in the morning, pressing the flowers later that afternoon after a nap, and scrapbooking your flowers days later. For many persons, nature journaling is an artistic and creative outlet and therapy, experimenting with all sorts of fun art mediums. While for others, it may just be the basics of sketching and recording factual data and time and date stamps to tell the story of a day. Journaling can be done through photography and videography. The inspiration can uh, just be from a book, a window, your garden, a park, the forest, or the vast ocean. The point is that it's a healthy, meaningful pursuit of deep lasting loving relationships with the natural world.